Unilisk are one of the strongest units in StarCraft 2. However, Spires take very long to build and Mutalisk are weak if you use them in the wrong situation. How do you transition into them in Zerg vs Protoss? Many players make the mistake of deciding at the start of the game they want to make Mutalisk this game. However, this is very risky and something you shouldn't really decide like that. In this episode of StarCraft 2 Study, we take a look at how we transition into Mutalisk using a replay of Nurture. Nurture is one of the best foreign Zerg players at this point in time and in this game he will go up against Robbie. The things we want to look for in this game is where he differs his normal build order to go into Mutalisk and what triggers him to start a Spire. And in the future hopefully we all know how to use them properly in Zerg vs Protoss. Hello everyone, my name is Loco and today I got another game of StarCraft 2 for you. This time it's going to be StarCraft 2 study like I already mentioned on how to transition into Mutalisk in Zerg vs Protoss. So as you can see we have this game of Ace and Nurture playing as the Red Zerg in the top right corner of Daybreak and his opponent for this game is going to be Grubby. However, we are going to just take a look at Nurture's, fin or Nurture's vision rather. And uh, as you can see the, ga the game is actually on times 2 speed so the start of the game will be a little bit faster because well, we don't really want to see the build order in this game. I'm going to assume you know a standard build order in Zerg vs Protoss and in this game Nurture will actually kind of use a, a Stefano-esque uh, style of Zerg vs Protoss meaning he will go for a spawning pool first like that. Uh, right there and he will transition into a uh, quick natural as well as a quick third base and that way he will be safe against pretty much everything so we are going to speed the game up just a little bit more because I already told you what is going to happen so what we basically want to look for is um, at what point Nurture actually decides to go for Mutalisk I know there's a lot of players out there that will actually just go for Mutalisk right away uh, but as you can see, Nurture sees that there's a standard build order by Grubby. He sees that there's a uh, Nexus down, there's a Forge down, there's a Cannon, there's a Gateway. So he can pretty much assume everything is completely normal. He sees double gases in the main. So no early 8 gauge shenanigans or whatever. Um, so yeah, he can safely transition into a third base right there. And normal, right here, 6 minute mark and both gases are being taken right now. So at this point in time... We are going to uh, slow the game down just a little while, a little while and um, we are going to take a look at what is happening right now. As you can see, there's an overlord right here that is actually scouting the gases right here. He sees that at the 6 minute and 20-ish second mark, um, the, um, um, the uh, gas guys is being taken and he will actually just play ahead normally. But at some point in the game, he actually decides to throw down a Spire. And we really, really, really want to take a look at that transition right here. So also important to note, there's actually a Overlord right here, um, hanging behind the third base right now. And this Overlord will actually be meant to actually scout this third base and see what is going on. He also sees the fourth gas being finished right now. And like a standard Zerg would do, he actually throws down a Road Dwarven and an Evolution Chamber, which is completely 100%. Uh, normal. In this game he will actually take his gases a little bit earlier, um, a little bit of a different timing there instead of uh, Stefano Zerg vs Protoss but it's relatively the same. He's going to spend his first 100 gas on a lair right there and he will most likely actually use his second 100 gas there we go for a uh, metabolic boost upgrade. However the first big difference is going to happen with the evolution chamber where he starts plus one melee attacks where Stefano would start plus one range attack. As you can see, there we see the Road Warren also being finished up right now, and this is the point where we want to take a look at. Um, let's actually go back just a little tiny bit. Uh, oh my, oh no, 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 no! I actually managed to close the entire replay. Wait, 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 no, 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 no. Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, here we see the Overlord of Nurture hanging, and we want to take a look at what point he decides to just scout ahead and see what's going on, because at this point, he really doesn't know anything. Um, besides those two assimilators being down right now. So there we go. At the 8 minute and 20 ish second mark, so a little bit after the 8 minute mark, he sends this Overlord in and actually checks what's going on um, in Nurture's base and he sees this building. This is the robotics facility. And he knows right now there will most likely be Sentry Immortal. 
So what he's going to do is actually just make a few roaches right here because there's a little bit of aggression uh, going across the map. He also knows there's a pylon out right now. So what he's going to do is make a spine crawler right here as well as a few roaches to defend against this right here. Uh, a few zealots. He also gets more and more gas guys starting uh, started because he will most likely want to transition into... Um, into what are they called? Investors, because investors are really good against immortal sentry. Uh, I'm a, a mortal sentry pushes, that is. However, as you know, in this game he will be starting to use mutilates, so at what point does he decide to do that? Well, as you can see, this overlord that we mentioned earlier actually goes ahead and sees a nexus going down right here. And what this triggers him to do is pull down a spire right away. So, as you can see right here, um, he scouts with an overlord a little bit after the 8 minute mark and he scouts with another overlord to 3rd base or with Zerkling to 3rd base, that doesn't really matter um, for uh, a 3rd base timing. As you can see, around the 8 minute mark he actually checks with an overlord, a little bit after the 9 minute mark he checks for a nexus and he sees that this nexus is already halfway down and he instantly throws down a spire. He already had these six gases up, but you have to keep in mind, um, if you wasn't doing that, I would recommend you just throw them down instantly, all of them. And also, really important thing that he will do right after is actually just drone up. He's going to make more and more drones and not really bother with any units. Right now on the production tab, just, just drones going down. Um, and he also puts down a four base pretty much right away. And right now he sees a lot of sentries. The sentries are uh, already being spotted actually by this overlord. So he knows everything that is going on right now. And he knows he is completely safe to actually make a lot of drones. He's also going to make a bunch of zerklings. Um, just to actually plant them right here. Um, to to um, actually push into a counter attack if possible. Um, if Grubby decides to get aggressive right now. But Grubby will not be able to be aggressive. Just because he knows there's roaches on the map. He knows there's zerklings on the map. And he just has to play defense. So the plus one attack is about to be finished. The spire is about 80, 90 ish percent done. So he can actually start making a lot of uh, units soon. But he also decides to put these excess minerals to actually start a uh, four, or actually that's a yeah that's a fifth base already. As you can see right here, he's just being a little bit aggressive, but he's not going to commit too much with all the zerklings. <coughs> And the Spire is right now finished and he instantly throws down 11 Mutalisk. And 11 Mutalisk is a lot. And what is he going to do with those Mutalisk? Well, um, Grubby most likely actually knows that there's a... Uh, yeah, he actually has an Observer right here. Um, as you can see... That little blur right there. Um, that's actually an Observer on the map right now. And they are hanging above the Zerkling. So he knows they are ready for a counterattack. But right now he doesn't really know if it's going to be Mutalisk. Or if it's going to be Infester. Or if it's going to be Roach Infester. Or if just going to be straight into Spire. So here we see all the Mutalisk flying across the map. And we actually, he also spots this little bit of an attack right here by Grubby. So what he does is actually send the Zerklings that he made um, actually to the third base right now. While he uses those Mutalisks that he made to actually start killing the probe line in the main. And here we go. He actually attacks at two places at once. And this actually makes Grubby move back as you can see right there. Um, his army has to move back right now and his mutalisks are just going to go ahead and actually do a bunch of pressure in the mineral lines and he's actually not going to commit with them too much he knows there's a temple archives out right now so he's going to uh, he's going to actually attack that right now but um, as you also notice as you also should notice right now he is not committing too much with all the zerklings he yes yeah the zerklings actually died but he made a few more uh, just to threaten some more counter attacks but he's not going to commit too much to those mutalisks because he knows the there will be more and more Mutalisk on the way right now. As you can see, he's only just now using this base for gas mining. He's not using any more um, than just the gas guys that's in this base. And he's also going to use just those gas guys that's at his fifth base to get as much gas as possible. So as you can see, he's engaging the stalker just a little bit if he feels like he can. But he's just making more and more Mutalisk at this point in time. So, that's a really, really nice um, transition if you ask me. 8 minute mark, a little bit after the 8 minute mark, you scout for a um, robotics facility right there, of Robotics Bay, I never know the name actually of it. And you also, around the 9 minute mark, you check for the, uh, for the third base. If the third base is already a, um, a little bit completed, like halfway completed, you should instantly throw down a Mutalisk then. 
and start, or immutable is that, aspire rather, and start making your fourth base and your fifth base a little bit later. Start making a lot of gas right there and just keep producing Mutalisk. He also started using all those upgrades. As you can see, he actually has two spires right now, most likely for getting one with upgrades. Um, quite a big deal actually, but yeah, I'm not going to uh, come, uh, I'm just not going to talk about that too much. But he instantly starts all the upgrades in his spires and he also starts a bailing nest. So you might ask yourself, well, um, there's a point in time where Mutalisk are just not really cutting it anymore because there's high Templars out. So how do you deal with this? Well, at some point you will actually be able to snipe off all those sentries that the Pro player has just before the high Templars are really really out and the storms can uh, can really bother you. So as you can see right here, he is uh, pressuring just a little bit, but he's also getting a bailing nest right now as well as an infestation pit. So as you can see, he will want to transition into Hive Tech, but he also has the possibility to make Banelings if he has the possibility to kill down all those sentries, because, well, the only only real thing that makes Baneling useless is sentries in this game, because the force field will not allow them to walk in right here. So as you can see, he's just going to fly a little bit back and forth. Since he's already max supply, he is actually able to... Um, to lose a few Mutalisk here and there because he will want to go for some Infestus really, really soon. Also getting a Spy attack right now. Um, so yeah, um, really, really cool play right there by Ace Inertio. Um, so once again, if you want to transition into Mutalisk, let's actually go back a little bit into the replay. Um, Use your overlord spread to actually check out what is going on. So right here, we are once again at the 8 minute mark where he first checks those gas guns, or he first checked those... Um, those, um, um, what is it called? The... Bam, bam, bam. There we go, the robotics facility. He first sees that with his overlord right now. And about a minute later, he actually checks the same thing with another overlord for the third base. He sees this base is already being halfway completed and instantly throws down a spire right there. He also goes for a fourth base right after, as well as a fifth base a little bit later. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video, as always, please leave me a comment in the section below, um, a link to the replay will be in the comment section as well, so um, please go ahead if you're interested in watching this game yourself, um, if you want to finish watching this game or just check the entire thing um, more in depth, um, you can just check that from the link in the description. I want to thank you all for watching, have a great day and I'll see you again, bye!